Greetings, fellow makers. I'm Bill. Welcome to the shop. We are live from the shop, working on a little bit of a project today. And that project is for my mechanist helmet, which is right behind me. Boop. So these are goggle things and they need lenses. So I'm going to vacuum form them. I've got my toaster right here. I've got my frame for vacuum forming. Uh, the only thing I don't have is the plastic. You see, what I did was I bought a bunch of plastic at Tap Plastics up in Bellevue, and then I left it there. <laughs> so today we're going to experiment a little bit. Now, I was going to use PETG, and this bottle, this uh, Refresh Diet Tonic Water bottle, is also PETG plastic. So I'm going to cut this apart, I'm going to apply some tint to it, and then I'm going to try and vacuum form it. I don't know what's going to happen, but it should be at least entertaining to watch. So I'm going to do that, and we'll see how it goes. And then I have a whole pile of other stuff that we're going to vacuum form. We're just going to experiment a bit and have fun today. All right, here we go. Got my bottle here, and there's a nice strip down the middle of it that we can flatten out. So I'm going to liberate that just with an X-Acto knife here. And there we go. I'm going to hang on to this. I'll use that. I'll use that later. Now this plastic is quite a bit thinner than what I would have used than what I bought from the store. So we'll see how it we'll see how it turns out. There we go. I don't know what I'll do use that for, a funnel or something. But now I have this tube of plastic and I'll just cut it lengthwise. And then I can flatten it and I have a nice flat sheet of plastic. Uh, and I hope, boy, that doesn't quite fit in my frame, um, but I can I can fix that somehow. Get the surface wet with water to help apply the tint, like so. And then I do this like that, and then I apply this. Like that, and then I do this and squeegee that on. So I took my window tint. This is the the tint that's on the PTG plastic, the, the soda water bottle plastic. It's in there. The toaster's heating up, so uh, I'll jam that in there with these clamps so I don't burn myself. Got my gloves on. Got my vacuum ready to go. We'll heat it up. Once it's at the right heat, plunk it down on there, and then. Bob's your uncle. I hope. We'll see. No one knows what's going to happen. I'm sure someone knows. Yeah. Someone out there yelling at this room. Probably. There we go. Cat Valkyrie subscribed for two months in a row. Holy crap. Hi, Cat. Oh, no. Oh, no. The, well, let's just keep heating it up and see what happens. The window tint appears to be self-destructing. Uh, everything. No, the the window tint. Well, let's just let's just keep going here. See what maybe it'll smooth out. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Everything's going pear shaped. You know what? I think the. Uh, the seal that I made is what failed. <laughs> there, that's, uh, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have to wait for the real plastic to come in, because that's not gonna work. Oh well, let's vacuum form something else. <laughs> okay, so a couple things went wrong. <laughs> we tested some assumptions, we learned a little bit. Um, the piece of plastic to start off with wasn't wide enough for my frame, so I put some duct tape on it, and that pulled off immediately. So that was a problem. Um, gorilla type tape might s survive the heat better. Um, Corlock in the chat says. Um, maybe, I don't know. But my one piece of plastic is gone. Um, I think that this plastic actually would have worked pretty well. The window tint crinkled a lot and it pulled away very easily. So I don't think that'll work. Uh, I do have to go get, pick up the plastic I bought and I can do some more experiments. But I can't do that today because I don't have my plastic. However, I do have a pile of other plastic here. This is styrene plastic. It won't work, obviously, for my eye pieces because I can't see through them. But I have a pile of other stuff that we're going to vacuum form 
uh, for fun. Just to, I have everything out, might as well do it. But this is a, a good example of like, hey, I'm not quite sure what'll happen or what'll work. Give it a try, see what happens. Now we know. <laughs> Got a cat hair and a piece of styrene plastic that's gonna go in there. Safety first here. Got gloves, we got clamps here. And I just let that plastic melt until it droops a bit. All right, you can kind of see in there the plastic is drooping quite a bit. I think we're about ready to roll. See how it's kind of drooping there? So let's do this. It's cooling a bit, but we're good to go. Do that. Ah! That's some weird spider webbing there. There you can kind of see the pull. I don't know why I got... Oh, it came right off. Oh, that's nice. I don't know why I got that weird spider webbing going on. Uh, uh, it might not have been hot enough. Yeah, maybe. I, I did hold it out for a while. But there, uh, that was what the plan was to do with the clear plastic. <laughs> What's cool now is uh, these held up pretty well. We could just do that again if we needed to. Um, yeah, but I'll cut these out and reset and do it again. You have five seconds to defuse the bomb. Oh Mitsula says that the ideal temperature for polystyrene is around 250. Well, this oven will do 400. And I have it on as high as it'll go. Holy crap. All right, that's ready to go. That's oh, yeah. Much Yeah, that went a lot better. Here we go. This is our little test piece, a little styrene test piece. And let's see if it fits in the helmet. Let's push it in from the, from the inside out. Hey, look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. That, that is nice. So that, that's what I'm looking for. Obviously, it needs to be transparent. But you can see it's got that nice dome shape coming out in front of it there. So that is what we're looking for. So that's cool. We Now we know when I get the appropriate material and I vacuum form it, those pieces will fit in the helmet. Good to go. Glad I did this little experiment. Now, let's play some more. I got more things to vacuum form. This is the uh, this is a hydrocal casting of the Hearthstone symbol that we had the mold of it, so we pulled one of these and we got some extra hydrocal. Uh, I've got some 3D printed pieces here. You can see we already did one of these, but we'll do another one. This is a little Dragon Priest mask that was 3D printed and we vacuum formed the thing. But I'll do that again just to show you guys what it looks like. Uh, what else? We have some Lego over here, some Lego guys. We have a little dude. Actually, the first thing I want to do, I took him apart, but I, but I have pieces of Han Solo in here. I'll put him back together. We're going to make him in Carbonite. That'll be fun. Uh, and some other Lego pieces we got to chameleon guy here. Um, curious to see how that plastic holds up to the heat. Now everyone in the chat is talking about Lego. This is awesome. I wonder what would be more dangerous. A, a beach made of Lego bricks? Or a beach made of volcanic rock? Because I've been on a beach made of volcanic rock and I cut a huge hole in my foot in Hawaii. That is quite hot. Alright, here we go. I hope everyone's ready. Let's do this. Go! Well, there's our, our guys <laughs> embedded in plastic. <laughs> See if they uh, want to come out. I probably should have dusted them with something. To... Boy, he is. <laughs> he is in there. He is not a happy camper. Oh, yeah. Look, that came right out. That's awesome. The, uh, the Lego brick appears to be just fine. There are some underhangs and stuff on, on this guy, though. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to get him out. Ah, his legs! <laughs> Just his legs came out. Oh no, we got him. Oh wait. Ow, oh, that hurt my thumbnail. I just ripped his hands off. His hands are still in there. <laughs> Look at this! Ah, nightmare! This isn't how the movie's supposed to go. Oh, we got one hand out. 
and the other one. And they are, you know what? He is, he's doing kind of okay. Here you go. Oh, you changed him. No. There we go. I, I split his he is, he is sad. <laughs> he, hey, you know what? But he survived. All right. And there we go. We have our little haunting carbonite. That worked out okay. I'll trim that up later. <laughs> The pe this piece right here, this is the Vacuform book. This was originally 3D printed and then sanded smooth and then Brittany made a mold of it. We used that mold to cast plastic pieces for the final part, but we had some extra Hydrocal for a different project, so we cast another copy in Hydrocal. This is like a plaster. So this is a Hydrocal piece that was originally, yes, 3D printed. All right, we are just about ready to go. I'm just gonna kick this thing out right away. Whoa, yeah! There we go. That! That pulled almost perfectly. There's our frame with a piece in it. Still a little warm. Move that out of the way. There is the plastic, and there is our vacuform buck. We should be able to. I should. I keep saying I should put powder on here, but I keep forgetting to. But it should be able to just pop this right out. There we go. This is still good. We can do another pull on that. And there is our hollow vacuformed piece right there. The, uh, you can see it got kind of thin and pulled uh, right through. That's not necessarily a problem, um, so long as that happens after you get your shape. Um, there was some spider webbing in the back here that I just pushed on with my hand. Um, they kind of made their way onto the model, but that, like, if I was actually going to use this, that would be fairly easy to clean up. There we go. You know what? Oh, it, it rounded quite a bit. There's the pieces that we, we did there, and the, the we did a quick test on some foam, some EVA foam, and that rounded quite a bit. Um, the, the people in the chat wanted to know what would happen if you vacuum formed a, an EVA foam prop, and it compressed a bit. It is fairly dense, but it did compress quite a bit. There's our pieces there. That is the EVA foam. Let's... Um, yeah, it's rounded over quite a bit. Um, it's actually nice and smooth. <laughs> if you need to smooth your EVA foam, that's one way to do it. But if you look at it from the side, it's kind of domed a bit. So I can't recommend vacuum forming uh, your EVA foam props. Uh, here is our other tool test. This thing worked like a champ, just like that. And now, I have a perfect copy of this guy. If I need a prop like this for, here let's cut it out real fast, for like a convention, if I need something quick that's con safe and lightweight, then there you go. Okay, it's not perfect, but like I was saying, if you need a prop piece real fast, that's a good way to do it right there. Put that in my pocket. Well, that was awfully fun today, you guys. We vacuum formed some stuff. We had some successes, some failures. We learned an awful lot, but mostly it was just really fun to experiment. I'm particularly fond of the Han Solo and Carbonite and how he turned out right there. Pretty neat little fella there. I was impressed how well the, um, the plastic, the Lego plastic held up. This little uh, prop thing here, if I were to see that, that worked out really well, especially because it was so fast. I can paint this up have a prop done in no time. Um, Brittany ran in here and painted up the uh, Hearthstone symbol, just threw some uh, copper rub and buff on there, and that's pretty nice right there. Again, all of these things were done really, really fast using the Vacuform table. We have a really good Vacuform table video. You really ought to go check out. We'll link to that down in the description. It's how I built this guy right here that we used on today's live stream. 
you didn't get to check out today's live stream, well, you better go follow us on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash punished props. You'll get a notification from when we go live. It's usually Tuesdays at noon Pacific, and then we do our Q&A live show Thursdays at 5 Pacific. So see us over there. Uh, I hope you guys have been inspired to try building your own vacuum form table. This uh, toaster was eight dollars at Goodwill so the barrier to entry is very low I hope you give it a shot because it's an awful lot of fun and this is a remote and this is a reminder to experiment try things out see what happens uh, that's what we did today learned a lot and we had a lot of fun until the next live stream you guys go have fun play in your shop we'll see you